Former Deputy Senate President Ike Kweremadu has proposed a political solution to ensure the release of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Aipop Namdi Kanu. He believes that this can be achieved if the Southeast Caucus in the National Assembly moves to intervene in the matter. He said it would help the federal government understand the feeling of the people and also reduce tension in the southeast. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ihe Ibeji and Ambrose Iboke. Thank you very much, um, Ihe Ibeji, for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. Yes, um, this, this sounds very interesting, but the part that gets me is helping the federal government to understand the feelings of the people. The federal government of Nigeria went round this country, and I'm talking about the Buhari administration and all of the people that work with him, to canvass for the votes of the people, making promises uh, to make sure that they all are carried along in the administration as he went forward. Now, this is the second tenure under President Muhammad Buhari, and I'm trying to understand what the former Deputy Senate President meant by helping the federal government to understand the feelings of the people. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I accept his speaking with respect to the feelings of the people as at today in terms of the, um, the violence and the issues that are arisen over time because of the uh, IPOB and the Nandi Kanu issue. Well, because in terms of the feelings of the people, in terms of the agitations right from time, in terms of what they've always wanted with respect to marginalization dating back to the civil war, of course, the federal government understand that. So I want to believe that what he means is the, the exacerbated situation that has been brought about since um, this agitation that uh, when uh, Nandi Kanu came into, into the picture with the IPOB, uh, it sits at home that the IPOB has, has brought um, the economic uh, uh, you know, shutdown in this South East I, 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 I want to believe. Uh, H, are you still there? That that is what he means. So he means understanding the feelings of the people, um, because the government have systems to know the feeling of the people originally in respect to what their demands are. Um, he, now, <laughs> let's go back to some of the things that he said. We know the reason why IPOP came up at, in, at you know at the first instance. We know. Um, about the civil war, and we're not going to go back into all of that. But then, how did Namdi Kanu come into play? Of course, it started from some agitations. Uh, where it is today, we cannot necessarily um, say that this is what all the Igbo people stand for. But if the government is yeah. yet to understand what the people of the Southeast need, in 2021, with all of the things that we've seen happen in the Southeast, and I'm not in any way excusing the burning of government establishments and, uh, you know, INEC officers, uh, you know, killing police officers and all of the things that are happening there. Of course, you know that when there are agitations or tensions, there are also criminal activities that can happen, uh, you know, aside, uh, besides it. But how do you think that the federal government should respond to the issue of, um, you know, the Southeast and the tensions? Let's even take out Namdi Kano, who is one person, out of the equation and look at the East Southeastern problem and why we're here, why there is even room for a Namdi Kano to emerge in the first instance. So, I mean, um, first and foremost, the federal government would need to look at massive, uh, that First and foremost, in terms of infrastructural development, the 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 the, the, um, the slant in lack of infrastructural development in the southeast is one area that needs to be addressed. Number one, but very very key. Let me know. Let us let us not remove that um, aside. There has been this psychological, this mental burden um, right from the time of the civil war that has always been on the mind, on the psyche of the ordinary um, evil, man, evil person. Maybe not us, maybe unspoken, but it's always been there. The federal government needs to find a way to tackle that. Um, I mean, a lot of people speak about um, other solutions to these things, political solutions, without talking about that. I mean, how do you make a, a, an average evil man, you know, forget, um, so to speak, what he terms as injustice, you know, to, to their race for something that they feel that should never have happened in the first place, uh, and an agitation they felt that they should have allowed, they should have been allowed to achieve. 
You understand? That's the mental and psychological burden on them. You need to have, you need to begin to tackle that to assuage them. How do you do that? You need to engage them. Yeah. And that's one of the roles that the leaders and the governors should play dispassionately. Yes, it gets to the point where the leaders and the governors need to understand that. Um, I think we lost that connection, but let's go to Ambrose. Okay, Ambrose, um, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Boke, so my question is straightforward. Um, the former Deputy Senate President is seeking that m the um, um, certain members of the National Assembly come together uh, to propose a plan of sorts that can help the federal government understand the plight of the people. The situation in the Southeast is both political and otherwise, but is this, is this political solution, in his words, the answer to the problems that the Southeasterners are facing. Again, I asked um, our other guests the same question. The issue of Namdi Kanu is one. The issue of the Southeast is another. And in addressing all of this, is it just a political solution that will suffice? Can, can you hear me? Oh my goodness, I think we lost that connection. Okay. Um, but back to you, um, Ihechi, if you heard me. Yes, I did hear you. Yes. So I mean, um, that, that is what I what I that's what I mean by what I mean by it's a it's a holistic, it's a comprehensive uh, solution to the problem. It is not just political, it's not just infrastructural. You need to look at that psychological part. Uh, that's one of the most difficult, in fact, that's the most difficult part of it to make the common evil man forget that so-called injustice. And if I may say, that's one of the reasons why this IPOB in agitation has come to fall. One of the reasons why Maso, which was the first uh, under Rafa Wazirike uh, as far back as 2005 to 2011, it was one of the reasons why it came to light in the first place. <laughs> I, even though that one was not as violent as what we currently experience today, which quite frankly, is criminal. I mean, any form of violence to me from any sort of agitation is definitely criminal. So those are the, those are the, those are the, for me, those are, that's the, so those are the crux of the issue. Crux of the issue. So it's not just about infrastructure. You want to build a second Niger bridge that will solve the problem. No, that's not just going to solve the problem. That's just scratching the surface. You want to build the East West Road. You want to build this road. You want to do the Oka Road. You want to do build the uh, Onicha Owe Road, Link Road, and you feel that will solve it. Okay, that's good. It's taxes. But what about that area that where you get to interface with the people to make them understand that you accept and understand that this and this war that was fought at some point in time, <laughs> you know, it has ended. And we want them to really be one people. We want them to be one Nigerian. Uh, as long as you're not going to interface with them in that kind of manner, then this sort of, you know, agitations and splinter groups will always come up. And that's the way I see from where, where I come from, from where, from where I'm standing. Well, I, th I want to thank you very much. Unfortunately, our time is moving pretty fast and we have to wrap things up here. Um, thank you thank so you much for much speaking for with us. Me. We appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us because time is not on our side. We have to wrap things up. But we recently got wind of the news of one of our very revered guests, Obadiah May Lafia, a former governor of the CBN. And so in honor of him, we bring you this package of all of his appearances on Plus TV Africa. We want to say our hearts and our prayers are with his family. My name is Mary Anakon. Have a good evening. This tragedy is about the lives of our very precious young people, the hope of our future. Before we pontificate, let us for a moment place ourselves in the shoes of those young people. This is the rainy season. For several weeks, they are staying in the forest. They, they have no home. They are lying outside. Come rain, come shine. Cold, heat, mosquitoes. 
come thunder, come storms, with guns pointed at their heads, with threats for their lives to be snuffed off at any moment. As you know, five of their colleagues have already been killed. One was buried on Saturday. I saw the television broadcast of the funeral. The parents and the family are heartbroken. So before we pontificate about other people, who to me are very marginal, their life is not worth a fraction of the lives of these young people. I don't know how people reason. What is the definition of a family? I hope I don't have to bring a dictionary and open it to you and then say, look, my friend, this is the definition of a bandit according to uh, you know, the, the standard dictionary. A bandit is a robber or a thief. My worry as well is that going by the history of some of these kinds of funds, you will be surprised that it is the rich and the elites that end up having access instead of ordinary people who really should be the target of, of these funds. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's the way our system is. Nigeria in 2017 overtook India as the world capital of poverty. So, we are having very serious problems. Uh, there has been a massive fall uh, in foreign reserves from a peak of about $60 billion uh, to today around 30, $33, $34 $30 billion. And not only that, uh, there's been a massive fall in the value of the Naira uh, from about 160 Naira to the dollar uh, in uh, 2014 to now almost 500, 480 uh, Naira to the dollar. It's an extraordinary fall of almost 200 percent i mean it's, it's it's terrible you know the presidency is the highest magistracy of the federal republic of nigeria and as they say about the papacy any cardinal who badly wants to become pope should never be appointed to that position because his motives must be very questionable if he loves it so much because being Pope should be something that should be held in great awe. And people should not have an inordinate ambition for it. By going four times plus, you know, wanting to be president, some people say, okay, they give him about the benefit of the doubt. But from the very beginning, people say, no, no, this is very bad news.